Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go over tips and tricks for beginners on using QCAD, a very affordable and powerful 2D computer-aided design program for RC modelers. There are a range of computer-aided design programs out there for both professionals and hobbyists. Uh, you can see the list coming up. There's about 45 different programs out there. They can range from very high-end programs like AutoCAD that are both a two-dimensional, three-dimensional version, and there are other uh, companies that make programs that are more affordable for the home uh, user. For the longest time, I've been using um, TurboCAD. I've been very happy with it, really started using it about the year 2002, so almost 20 years using TurboCAD. It's a good program, it's a powerful program, as it's developed and added a 3D function. That had a little bit of cost. For the longest time, I was using TurboCAD Deluxe, which uh, now is about $220. Um, dollars. The TurboCAD now has a designer 2D program, just the two-dimensional two program, which is fine for des designing model aircraft, house plans, uh, things of that nature, for $70. So that's a step in the right direction. However, uh, I just wanted to explore other programs out there to see what options might be for other people that didn't want to spend that amount of money and I came upon a program called QCAD. And the website is QCAD.org. I'll put that in the uh, description. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice program. I've been working with it for the past several months. It's a 2D program. It's available in Windows, um, uh, Microsoft operating system, as well as Linux. And it's a very powerful program that's developed over time. It's got a ton of features. We'll take a look at the website in a moment. And what I like about it is it seems to be a surprisingly intuitive program. It seems to know what you want to do and helps you get to that uh, vantage point. Uh, things like trim uh, is a very powerful feature of it. It's just got a nice feel to it. And I feel whenever there's a question of something I want to do, it seems to come up with a way to do it. So in this video, what I want to do is walk you through some of the basics of QCAD. And what I intend to do after this um, is demonstrate how to uh, design plans. This is an example of my Light Flyer 2 plan that was done completely in QCAD. Uh, the link for this will be in the description, but there will be follow-on videos where I will literally draw this airplane in QCAD step-by-step -step to show you how I use all the functions to design or build an RC model airplane plan. One of the things I forgot to mention was the price of QCAD. It's a European company, it's 33 euros. That's about 40 US dollars for it. You download it, which I think is an extremely affordable price for the, the power of this program. But there's an even better deal. You can download an absolutely free version of QCAD. There are some things you can't do, like print out the full-size plans with tiling, but you get a good feel for how the whole program works for free, then you can upgrade to the regular one. But for $40, for the type, for the powerful program you get on that, it's it's a really good deal. Two-dimensional drawing only, no 3D, uh, QCAD for $40. QCAD has a very well-organized website. These are the features of, of QCAD. You can see the spacer bar that just go on forever. We're not going to cover any one or even a percentage of these, but it just shows the depth of the program to solve whatever drafting problems you may have. This is some discussion of QCAD. Notice for Windows, Linux, and Mac that shows the breadth of where people use it. And we can go for the shop. If you actually purchase it, it's all online, uh, very organized. And you can see that there are various options. You can buy just the program itself. You can get help books. They've got special offers, uh, all very organized and um, easy to use. Again, the cost is about 40 US dollars. There's also a great little uh, chat room uh, on there where you can uh, see other people's problems, ask questions, just a very vibrant community as you can see. This is the instruction book <clears throat> that I got as a package deal with QCAD. It's about 240 pages. It's really quite well written and it answers just about every question you have. So as you get used to operating the program, there's some other bit of information you need. This is really a pretty easy source of information to get what you're looking for for your drafting. Now this is a view of my Light Ranger 2 program. It's just a simple <clears throat> uh, three-quarter inch full board design. And I'll be doing future videos where I will show you how I draw these plans. But for now, let's just go over some of the basics of QCAD, uh, things that go through my mind. 
All right, the menu bar at top is your standard menu bar with file, edit, view, select, that you're familiar with a range of programs. Some special things for the QCAD, of course, but they're all replicated with buttons and you won't go to the menu probably too, too much. Notice we have new, open, save. Notice with everything on QCAD, when you hover over the icon, it gives a little reminder of what it is, as well as a two-letter keyboard shortcut to do that action. Notice on the right-hand side, I've got the property editor and the layer list. Those are probably two of your uh, main things you're going to use. Uh, we can close the uh, layers for uh, the property editor, for example. Click on that, you get it right back. The property editor and layers, I use a lot as I do my various drafting tasks. Two other important items are the command line and the status bar. You can see the command line with the arrows at the bottom. And also that where I'm circling, that little mouse icon, that is the status bar. Now we can go up into the view menu and you can see that there's a command line and a status bar just above when I'm looking at the tools and widgets that are, are how you select the buttons for the tools and widgets. So here's a command line. If we deselect that, you can see the command line goes away. It's best to leave the command line selected. Then also I will deselect the status bar just so you can see what happens when that little mouse icon goes away. You use the um, status bar all the time as you're drawing for prompts of what you want to do for the next action. So the status bar is back in place. So you can see that little mouse icon. So this is the idle reset button. When you press that button, it brings it back to an idle reset stage, and then you can start selecting other tools. You can see there's a curve, there's circles, there's text, there's modify, there's all different tools that you can do uh, from these uh, buttons. So let's start with the line tool. And notice we uh, nothing is selected. Once we select the line tool right there, that shows as active. And then there's some other lines that you can select, lines between points, array, an infinite line, and so forth. So we'll use a line between two points. Which is selected here. And then we put our cursors there, and notice we'll click once, and it will give an indication for the next point on the status bar. And we can go to the next point, and the next point is the left side of the mouse button. That's where we click, and then we do the left again. And notice the right side of the mouse button down here is done. When we click that, we are done, and we have our two lines drawn as shown. We could do that again if we want. Just left click, snap into the grid, left click again to create the line, and then the right button to show that we're done with that particular action. Now with the left button again, we can select that. Notice that when we do select that line, its information shows up in the property editor. We can see the endpoints, the coordinates, the length is 10 inches. And that's true for any entity that you select within uh, QCAT. Now with left button again, we can select that entity, you see the two endpoints, and holding down the left um, button, we can move it around and it will snap automatically to those ends to the endpoint. Now we can snap, we can pick a different reference point if we want to. In this case, we're going to cut with a reference point. I'm right clicking on the mouse button and notice the um, status bar says to select a reference point. I do in the middle. Now I'm going to paste and it's looking for that middle point, left click, and the middle point of that line is right on the end of the line above it. Now again, holding down the left mouse button, we can select everything, hit delete, we get a clean sheet of paper again. Let's look a little bit at the circle tool. So here are all the different circles. You can see the little reminders, whether it's a radius or two points to the circle. Once we select it, that's in the active button. These Buttons underneath, or whether it's freehand, snapping to the grid, snapping to tangents, very actions for that. So we'll left click, we get the center, we pull out, and we have a circle. Now we can go back to the idle state, we can select that circle, we can look at the properties bar, you'll see information on the radius, the dimension, 
we can change that information if we want. So we want a six inches and the circle becomes six inches. Now we can draw a second circle. It snaps to the center. Say we're going to draw a tire. We might want to do it freehand. We can go select the freehand tool and we can put the distance any, t any, any distance that we want. We can still move that circle. If we don't like what we've done, we can simply redo and it will send it back to where it was before. We can select both of them, drag it with the left mouse button and move it around as we see fit. Left mouse button and we can deselect it. On the Mac, an easy way to move around, you hold down the command key and the left mouse button and you can drag the picture anywhere to center it up in your computer screen. Now we'll select both uh, circles and get rid of them. Go back to the idle state and let's look at some spline curve tools. Now these spline tools can be very handy for RC model designs because you can basically trace the shape of a curve um, and it just takes some practice to see which ones work for you for the type of drawing you want to do. I'm left clicking with this uh, spline tool here and you can just see how it behaves as you draw various points. Notice on the status bar when we uh, right click we're done. We can select this whole entity with the left mouse button and we can just move it or do anything we want as with any other entity. Here's another spline with more of control points. We'll first select this with the left mouse button, delete, and we'll just experiment with another spline tool. This one is more rigid through points. You'll see how it behaves. Again, just play with these and experiment and you'll see what works best for you. Right click to be complete. And we'll go back to the idle state. We'll select that. You'll see the control points. Watch what happens when we move the various control points on the spline. So uh, drag with the left mouse button and get rid of that. Now we'll look at some squares. Okay, so this first one, we're going to create a polyline and we just, that means a complete um, unit with a square. So we drag it with the left mouse button and notice that it's all four sides together. We can look at the property box and we can see the size um, of uh, one foot eight inches. We can change that if we want to, to whatever dimension we'd like for that box. And notice when we select it, we select the entire box. The other one is to draw a box to a specific size. So we selected this box and we put in dimensions, a width of four and two inches. We can change that. We'll call it uh, eight and four. And that's the box right there. Wherever we left click, that will place the box in our drawing. Notice we can uh, change the reference point to where it's going to connect to the grid or whatever we're connecting to. Here we have a, a right side on the middle. Now we go back to an idle state. Notice that this individual four segments of the box, it's not a complete box. We can pick a side or a top. We can get property information on the length, but the program will consider that just one single line. And we'll, we'll show how we can experiment with that. We can select that one line and we can move it away if we want to. We can connect it to the end. We can move it again. Right now we're going to cut with a reference. It says reference point. We'll pick it in the middle. We will right click. We'll paste. It's got the middle reference point. Click it to the end. Just a demonstration of how you can uh, play with those line segment entities. So we'll select everything, delete that again. 
Next we'll take a look at the hatching tool where we can fill in various objects. So we'll go back to the circle. And we'll draw a circle. And we'll pretend that we're making a tire. This exercise will actually be a spoked wheel. Again, holding down the command key, left uh, mouse button, we can put it in place. So go back to the idle state, and this is the hatch. Notice it says you have to select an entity in order to do the hatching. So what we'll do is we will select a circle and use the hatch tool. Now we've done the outer circle, we select the hatch. Your hatch pattern can be solid black. We click that and the entire circle is filled in black. Now I'd like to do the tire. What we did, we selected the outer circle and the inner circle, and it knows enough to fill it in. We can change that to our hatch pattern. Notice there's any range of hatch patterns. With having both circles selected and the hatch, it fills in just the outer circle. So it's simulating a tire. So we'll select the two circles again. We'll hatch, we'll fill it in with solid black. Now we'll experiment with the rotate tool to draw some simulated spoke wheels. We'll go back to the idle state, the line tool, line of two segments. We'll snap to the middle of the circle and then the edge. And now we're going to duplicate and rotate with the modify tools. Here's the modification tools. Notice that we have the rotate. We have to select a point and a reference point to rotate around. We'll do that at the center. It calls up this. We're going to do multiple copies. I did 12 times 30 degrees is 360. Click OK and there are your simulated spokes. Now what we'll do is we'll zoom in using the trim wheel on the mouse and I'll draw another circle at the middle to simulate uh, an axle uh, location. So right in the middle, we'll pull out a circle, just whatever uh, size we want. And now we're going to go back to the idle state. We're going to go to the modify. And then we have the breakout segment. And this is the magic of QCAT. I really like that. All we do is click on this. It knows enough to trim out these segments inside of the circle. There's no fancy things you have to do. This is it. And I really, really like this feature a lot. So that is our wheel. We go back to the idle reset. We'll select the entire wheel and delete that. Now we can take a look at the text feature. It's really very easy to use in QCAD. You just pull up the text, the type of font you want, the size, and uh, type in your text. And what I've done is I've changed it to half an inch. That's for the last text uh, printed. We'll go ahead and type in the test. You just click OK, left click on a selection point, and there your test is located in your drawing. Now these are some samples of drawings that I did for the light flyer, a foam flyer. This is the wing. And what happens in TurboCAD, you can strategize and notice that the properties bar, the wing is one foot three inches or 15 inches long. And what we do for top views is we draw half the wing, half the fuselage, and we use the mirror command to do a duplicate. Now you've got to, to do the mirror command, you have to have a selection. So we'll go ahead and select the entire wing, go to the mirror command, You'll pick a reference point to mirror it on. See the other half? It'll snap to the other reference point. You click OK to keep the original, left click, and there is your completed wing through the mirror command. And the mirror command is very powerful. You can use that for an entire fuselage and wing. Here's a top view of the wing and fuselage and tail surfaces of the light flyer. We're going to do the same thing. We have to select what we want to mirror. Left click, drag the whole fuselage, click the mirror command, snap to the top, snap to the bottom. We're going to keep the original, click OK, left click, and now we have a completed airplane, a mirror image of the first half. Very, very handy feature to use. 
Now I build up a library of parts. I have an electric motor, a high-tech HS40 servo, a six-inch ruler that I use in various plans. You may want to take a motor and make it bigger or smaller. So the best thing to do is to copy whatever you want to do, uh, modify, so you have the original. So I've copied that. I'll move to a clear space of my drawing. Right-click with paste. We have paste, and there's the image. I left-click. There's the motor, the same size and we're zooming in with the scroll wheel. What I'd like to do is make it twice as big for whatever model I'm designing. Again, we can use the scale command. We select the entire object. We go to the scale command. We pick a point on that object. And we delete the original in this case. We give a size, we want it times two. Click OK, and there's the little motor twice as big as before. So you can do that for anything, make it bigger or smaller, just with the scale command. The other thing you might want to do is rotate some of these parts. So just for exercise, we'll do the same thing with the ruler. We will copy our ruler, so we have the original ruler where it is. We'll find a, a clean space on our drawing, right click, we'll paste, there it is, and we left click, right click, and we're done. So there's a ruler. Now we're going to rotate it. So as before, we have to select it. We pick the rotation. We pick a point. It's going to delete the original. We're going to turn it 90 degrees. Click OK. And there is the rotated ruler. Again, very easy to do. So what I'd like to do now is spend a little bit of time talking about the parallel line tool. I use the parallel line tool a lot. So what we're going to do is draw a couple of lines and just practice parallel lines, then trimming them to show how that works. So here's a random horizontal line. There's a parallel line. We have the distance between the lines is one inch, only one. And we just place the mouse over the line and it will pick one side or the other and you can draw any number of parallel lines. Let's draw a vertical line and use the parallel line tool with a vertical line. So we're snapping to the grid. Left click, left click on the lower point, right click to get rid of that. And now we're going to use a parallel line again, located there. And this time we're going to make it three inches. And we just Locate the mouse near the line. It picks up where it wants to go. Again, very intuitive. We could even go to these above lines and we have a series of lines. So let's pretend that is the beginning of a wing. Now we want to trim it with the modified tool, uh, the segment tool. We've selected that. We want to keep this intersection as our pretend wing. We can just left click on all these extra line points. It clears them right up. And there's our finished entity. Again, com uh, command key and left uh, mouse, we can move the center of the drawing. I will demonstrate the radius tool with the one inch radius. You just click on the two lines. Again, very easy to do to modify a drawing. You can even do it internally. You just experiment with what you come up with. We'll go back to the idle state now, and what we'll do is we'll select, notice this line is a complete segment from the red to the blue uh, square. We can move that line out. If we want to put it back, we just undo, it goes into the place. But let's say we want to break it up into different segments. We can use the um, tool here to place a break point on here. We select the line that knows the intersection. We click on that intersection. Now we go back to the idle state, Notice when we click on that, it is a seg separate segment that we can move, delete, trim, whatever we wish to do. We can take it out of there, again, by putting in that breakpoint into the line. So we'll select all this with the left uh, mouse button, we'll delete that, and we'll look a little bit at the dimension tools. Let's draw a box just to practice some dimensions on. Size is not important. We select that line, and notice we can see that it's 8 inches long from the property bars because we have selected it. This is just a measurement tool to determine what the size is in our drawing. We click on that intersection, 
left click and in the small green you can see it says 8 inches so we can at any time measure anything that we are drawing. So we'll right click out of that and if we want to add the dimensions on that, say you wanted the spacing, we could just you can see the little ticks, each one being an inch long if you wanted to help that with your drawing. What you'll probably do if you want to put published dimensions on that is the dimension tool. And it's very easy to use. We'll just do a horizontal one. You just select that, you intersect with the left, you go over to the right, left click, and then drag it up. And there is your eight inches and the uh, properties. You can determine the size of the font for that. But that's very easy to put dimensions on your drawings wherever you would like to do that. The other thing that's very handy is the leader tool. So we just click wherever we want, drag it out, drag it a second time with a left click. And this is a little leader arrow that can point to whatever we're working on. You can add some text. It's a very easy way to add clarity to your drawing if you want to highlight some specific item. So we can put leader, click OK, then left click wherever we want the leader. And that's our finished drawing. Now another thing that we may want to do, if, for example, is do detailed parts for an airplane. So this is the fuselage of the light flyer. I've copied this and this is the outline we want to simplify to put onto our foam board to cut out the fuselage. So what we do, we copy this. We have the idle state of the program. And we're going to start getting rid of items that we don't need to have the fuselage outline. We'll get rid of the tail. We just left select and drag, left click, delete, uh, left click, delete all these line segments until we get the fuselage portion clear that we can uh, then use to put onto our uh, foam board. Again, we're just selecting each point and deleting it. This is a former F4. We just select that, delete, select, delete, and so forth for the remaining portion. Again, the command key, left mouse to move the drawing uh, sideways. See the 1 16th inch ply firewall, we'll get rid of that. There'll be an overhanging line, delete that, just select uh, delete. Now notice this is part of a larger segment. We'll trim that here in a second. This one can be gone. This is a larger segment as well. And what we do, we just go to the modify tool, and trim those corners with the breakout tool. Go back to the idle state again. Select that tool, delete. Time to get rid of the wing on the top. And again, we just select all the various points and delete it until we have a clear outline for the fuselage that we want to put into uh, the foam board. And there's our finished outline, and uh, we can put that onto the foam board and go from there. So again, thank you for joining me in this video. I look forward to doing future plans of this nature, just taking you step-by-step as you learn QCAD to draw various model airplane plans. Best of luck with your efforts. Take care. Bye.